All right, patch is almost that, that long live uh, merge request. That's what we're talking about today. But before that, I wanted to acknowledge that we are streaming recording on a Gadigal land. I would like to pay respect to the uh, traditional owners of this land. Hello, I'm Vladimir. Uh, when I don't read books with random dogs, I do Drupal. And it's time for a story. So I spent the last year, 12 months, teaching in TAFE. And uh, that was a, quite an eye-opening experience. So I've seen quite a few different students. For the reference, TAFE is an Australian college, government college, where uh, basically which prepares students within a year, depending on the degree they're doing uh, for the industry. They do everything from nursing to IT and so on and so forth. So the most interesting bit was that I finished uni in 2005. We didn't do much kit back then. Uh, and uh, surprisingly enough, I realized that the IT industry doesn't teach kit now. And uh, with the tape, we have an agreement to have kind of industry feedback. And because I'm running the company, I said, I can give you a feedback. And one of my first feedback was, you have to teach Kit. Because regardless of the technology, regardless of the, what you're going to end up doing in IT, you need to know what uh, version control is, why do you need to use it, and so on and so forth. So that, uh, as I said, uh, that actually made me think uh, we are doing patches. AI people are in the other room. I mean, so uh, I maintain quite a number of modules as well. So I talk to developers uh, in the issue queues, and not only developers, and uh, another outcome of those talks, again, for the last 12 months, was that hey, we're comfor comfortable with patches. Why do we need to do merge requests? Merge requests are tedious. We need to learn something new. Uh, again, not everyone said that. But I heard that a lot, which also made me think, hmm, um, I was surprised because I, I'm using stuff like GitHub and GitLab on a daily basis. And I thought that was kind of given. Once you have a merge request, why do you need to create patch? In fact, I always hated patches. And I was going to get into that in terms of like how uh, do we do that. And I think the cherry on the cake was uh, one of our clients that uh, basically quit Git. Uh, they use the hosting provider that is not a Git-based hosting provider. I mean, you can do it Git, but uh, by default, it's not Git. So it means you can modify the files, or you can send a, a create, click and update stuff on the production. Basically, all the fun stuff that makes your website go boom sometimes. And uh, yeah, and they said, look, thanks for setting up the Git and CI. It's all nice. But hey, I'm comfortable just SSH into production and do composer update. I'm like, well, it's not a very, very good idea because of, and I listed all the reasons why it's not a good idea. But in the end of the day, they quit Git. So that was the first time, which basically was a prelude of saying, OK, I need to talk more about why do we need Git? Why do we need actually tell non technical people that Git is important? Because it seems like, the message is not getting delivered, especially the message is not getting delivered where Drupal is not, right? Or even some people who run Drupal, they think, ah, it's fine. I'll just update it. So target audience for this talk is uh, basically IT students. Anyone student here? There you go. One. Excellent. Welcome. Uh, people who graduated, people who didn't use Git, uh, clients, as I mentioned before. Uh, who don't like Git, who didn't use Git, who think um, this is something for developers. And obviously, developers who need to deliver this message or be convinced otherwise, or saying, you know, like, merge request, I'm comfortable with uh, all the technology, and that's fine. So an agenda for today. So we're going to talk about patches. What is patch, in a nutshell? 
what are the merge requests, how they differ into patches, what did GitLab bring to Drupal, and uh, how we can leverage that to our advantage. We're going to look at GitLab CI. And pending, we have time. We might even do a little contribution. So my talk finishes. Does anyone know what my time my talk finishes? <laughs> That's fine. I have a schedule. 12.15. Excellent. Oh, let's keep going. OK, so if you've been to Suchi's uh, first time contributors workshop, that's pretty much uh, success. This session would be a successor to her session. Uh, I will try to post the video for the first time contributors workshop before tomorrow's sprint so others can watch it again. But if you're watching it online, obviously, yeah, that's something to watch it first. Also, don't forget, there is a code sprint. Please contribute if you can. Tomorrow, 9 o'clock, Carithian room, which is this one. Right? That's a Carithian. Okay. And thanks to previous Next for sponsoring the uh, code sprint for the last many, many, many years. OK, let's look at the patch. So what is a patch? To create a patch, we need a git. What is a git? Git is a revision control system. So you have a code, you have a change, you have another change. That's how your system develops. So you need to save it somewhere, right? And uh, the most common use of the git and the most popular one is a GitHub. Uh, does anyone not have an, have an account on a GitHub? Good. So uh, in Drupal world, we actually, once we set up all the git, shenanigans and all that. We just uh, can go and pull the code. Uh, this is an example of a very, very little module called dynamic menu item. Uh, and as you can see, there is a version control tab. Once you're logged in and set up your Git, uh, there is a branch, default branch. So when you select that, you can pull the code and start making changes. Right. So that's the basic kind of the contribution. So once you get the code, you can uh, change it, and generate the patch. The patch is the changes between the commits, right? And if you're confused with terminology, uh, let's have a look at it. Because the best way to learn is a visual way. So we have a branch. Branch, usually main branch. And this is where all your code contribution sits. So someone comes and contributes the code. And that's what the circles represent. So each circle is a commit which uh, basically gives a bit more functionality, takes it away, or you know, do some changes to the code. And someone comes in, adds a new commit, do a code change, and that's how software system develops. So if we look at the issue on drupal.org, uh, in this case, the issue was actually automatically created by a bot. So Drupal 11 is upon us this year. So the bot started going around a couple of weeks ago and uh, check what needs to be done for the module to be compatible with Drupal 11. So if you scroll um, straight after the issue description, now there are two sections. The first one, you probably saw it, the same thing happened three years ago for Drupal 10. So the first thing is the patch, the file that actually shows the difference, right? And if I look at that file, it's a plain file unless you install the browser plugin. And all it does, it says, throw out this line, add this line. That's all. Your module should be compatible with um, Drupal 11. So how do we create patch? So we find an issue, as I said before. We pull the code. We did the code changes. And we generated the patch. Right? So if we look, can everyone see the this size fine? Can everyone see that? Good. 
So if we do git status in our system, I pulled um, exactly the same module dynamic menu. There's no changes there. We go and do a suggested change. Right, or 11. We do git, git status. You can see one file was modified. That's what red is for there. We do git diff. And we can see something, something very similar, right? So things comes out, things come in. Relatively simple, but uh, again, that's a change. And then we'll do the commit. OK. So let's talk about merge requests. How are they different to a patch? So we already have a difference. Why do we need a merge request? The merge request is a proposal to incorporate the changes from the service branch. As you can imagine, Drupal, uh, at the single time, there's plenty of developers are working on the same thing, right? Uh, and different things. So different features. Someone works on translation. Someone works on um, revisions. So there is many, many branches. If we all start pushing stuff um, into the same branch, obviously, it's going to be a mess. That's why uh, main branch of Drupal kind of sits there. But we create a separate branch. And what we do is we do our commits. We add some code, change some code, uh, modify it. And then we create what called merge requests. So once we think the functionality is complete, what we do, we go and say, I want to send this code back. Again, this is a simplified version where we work with a merge request and branching knows that you have to do like continue and pulling the code if you're working over multiple days and doing all this stuff. But in a nutshell, that's the reality. And then once your code would go through approvals, maybe a bit more changes, you finally can push your code back and the main branch would be updated. So that's what merge request is. And again, if we look at this automated issue created by this uh, created by this uh, board, we can see that under the patch, now we have a section that actually uh, contains a merge request. Now, with Drupal, uh, it's not only when we create, and we will go and create the branch, it's not only creates the branch, it also creates a repository for this branch. The reason for that is that you actually can uh, go and commit to it. Because you don't have access to a main branch of Drupal, and most of the time you don't have an access to a main branch and repository of the module because you're not a maintainer. You have to be a maintainer. So to do that, when you create a merge request, it actually creates a re different repository. Pulls the code in, and then you do merge request from one repository to the other. But uh, in a nutshell, if we'll go back to here, <laughs> it would be the same. It would be just not only a different branch, it would be different repository. And in the end, you would say merge request. And whoever has a right to merge back into the blue circle and the main branch would actually do that. Any questions? So here is another uh, merge request. And I, I just wanted to point out. So when you get a patch file, when you get a patch file, um, all you have is a file, right? File with a difference. You don't know if you can merge it back. You don't know. There, there's too many variables with a file. Although all you need to do is pull the code, get a patch, try to apply the patch. If it works, that's great. You start testing. If it doesn't work, you'll try to figure out why it doesn't work. Maybe patch needs update. Maybe there was a new version. Maybe something else was there. Whereas with pull request, we already can say uh, if uh, a uh, few extra things. Not only we can see plain diff next to a green tick, which uh, shows us exactly the same file. It all, we can also click on changes and have a visual representation of those changes. Oh, it's going to be next. So I'll, we'll see that um, in a few slides. Uh, but we can also see the name of the branch. The green tick actually means there is a. Uh, CI is running, which we're going to cover in the final section. And uh, it also says it's mergeable. 
It means whatever you have there, you can push it back without any conflicts. Now, uh, to, when you create a new branch, we'll see that. Uh, when we create a new branch, you have a set of commands. Uh, how to, so basically the first and the second section, it's adding the new remote just because we created a new repository, right? That we need to do a pull request from. And then we have a command how to check out our branch from this repository. And the bottom bit is actually once you did the commits, you will go and push them using this command right on the bottom. Uh, now, uh, actually commits, commit message, you have to scroll all the way to the bottom to get a commit message. And uh, it's fine when you have 10 comments, when you have 120 comments. Uh, sometimes it's uh, a bit funky, you need to scroll all the way down, copy the commit message all the way up, copy the push message on the bottom, and do that. But yeah, it's just something uh, you have to do at the moment. So GitLab. GitLab was introduced on the back of Drupal. So it's not gitlab.com. But yeah, I would recommend you to go and learn more about GitLab because it's not just code repository. There's many other things that are part of the system. And that's the only code repository out of Big3, which is a big bucket, GitHub and GitLab, that you can install Community Edition for free on your server uh, for Bitbucket Enterprise and for Git GitHub Enterprise, you actually need to pay. Uh, and the community edition is fully open source. So here's our Drupal thing uh, to go and find out how GitLab looks. Any module, including Drupal core, slide all the way to the bottom of the right column, click on the source code, and uh, you will see the source code. So this is a example of uh, how GitLab shows the difference. So two lines we changed uh, in the patch file, they look different in um, GitLab and actually visual. And you can see the list of files that we will change. So uh, here's our Drupal code repository. And on the left-hand side, whatever we learn about, here's our list of commits. Here's our list of branches. Here's our merge request. So we can go and check them out and see, do we have any merge requests there? Do we have any, uh, what sort of branches do we have? What sort of commits? So again, uh, once we click on changes instead of plain diff, so that would be our plain diff, right? The file we saw before, the changes, uh, we'll see the changes like this, which is nice and highlighted here. So makes much more difference. GitLab CI. So CI, continuous integration, is a development practice uh, where code changes uh, actually um, run while we pu push them, commit them, and merge them. They run through a set of automated builds, tests, and different things. So, and if you use CI before, the Drupal CI, uh, there was a message not that long ago that on July 1st, 2024, which is this year, 1st of July, Drupal CI and all patch testing will be turned off. So if you thought that patches are still fine, one thing you won't be able to do is you won't be actually from January 1st, you won't be actually see any C Drupal CI testing, which is an old type of testing where you need to go and manually tick which version of Drupal and the database you can use. That's why it makes sense to actually move towards uh, GitLab CI. And this is a timeline. It's in this tweet, but basically, 1st of July, non-Drupal CI test will be executed anymore. That's all will go towards GitLab. And uh, 1st of January, no Drupal CI testing results will be kept beyond 1st of January 2025. Okay, so GitLab CI, documentation is in progress. Once you start learning CI, I do recommend you to go read it and contribute to it. There is uh, some things that needs to be added but it's a movable thing, so I would recommend you, if you're doing a sprint, and if you decide to do a CI file in your module or someone else's module, please um, read through the documentation and see what is missing. So how did I discover GitLab CI? Uh, last year, I was uh, really into ECA, I still is, 
but I was looking through the code and I saw the dot GitLab CI. I completely missed the GitLab CI announcements. So I actually found it through the module, went to the code again, scroll on the bottom source code, and I saw GitLab CI file. It changed over the last year, but the reality is you don't need much to enable the CI. And there are three files that included that that you can see on the line five, six, and seven that will automatically kick off a bunch of scripts for you. It's gonna check integrity of your composer, it's gonna uh, run ESLint, unless you switch it off PHP CS, uh, and a bunch of other stuff. Great. And that's the file you can copy and put in your repository. So again, here, the green tick uh, means that the uh, OCI passed on this particular merge request. And you can actually drill down to the issue and see what's wrong. So you can see there are three stages. First uh, stage is ticked, which is passed. The second stage has some warnings, or it allowed some um, tests to fail. And the third stage is all good. So we have time. Let's try to do a contribution. So here's our dynamic menu item module, which I told before, version control. We pulled it back. We did it there. Uh, I'll copy the document CI. Do I have it open? There we go. So they actually say in the documentation what they say. You can actually go, and if you read the documentation, there is a template, and you can add template uh, GitLab CI as a file to your branch. So you can do it through a template, or you can just create a file and copy it there. Okay, so I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go to my dynamic menu items. I'm going to go to my issues. Create a new issue and we'll say, make sure there is an issue if you're doing some contribution. Add CI to this module. Based on Drupal docs. Put the link. I oh, know it's going to give me an error, so make sure you select that it's a feature request. Latest branches, I use development branch, and it's a part of the code. Save now. Yay, we created a new issue. Now you can see there is a, because I created this issue, it says create an issue fork. What we're we talking about. So it's going to fork the repository uh, and then to uh, create a separate branch, the one we can commit to, right? I keep on clicking on this hide. It just hides it visually from here. Uh, but show commands is dangerously near it. So show commands is the button you need. If you want to uh, contribute the code, yeah, you need to follow those instructions, right? Alternatively, you can click and go directly to GitLab interface. So this is our branch. So it says it's forked from project dynamic menu item. Do I see at the file? I don't. So what I'm going to do now I'm going to follow the instructions and I'm going to commit to refresh this page, make sure I get the instructions. So here, go to my code. First, uh, making sure we know about the other repository that was created. Then we check out the branch we need to contribute to. branch to check that we're actually on a correct branch right here. OK, 
can create the file or copy it from another repository. For example, if I'll go to ECI, I have it somewhere here. I can copy GitLab CI here. Okay. Git status. It says you have a. I'm going to remove this change I did before. So I have one file now. If I'll do git status, one file. So I'll do git add.gitlab. I'm going to scroll all the way to the bottom, do the commit message, scroll back up to the push message. Okay, we pushed our CI file and we'll see that's going to be reflected very soon here. Was it? Should be. So if I'll click here. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ah, oh, I'm not signed in. That explain <laughs> that explains that. That's another thing that uh, always gets me. Don't forget to look up in the top corner and make sure you're signed in. Uh, yeah, that's why I couldn't create the file from the drop-down menu either. Okay, that makes sense. So now it will ask me. Yeah, create a merge request. When you create an merge request, check that it, this is a correct branch. Sometimes default branch might be different, and that happens from time to time. I don't want, let's say I don't want to close the issue, for example. While doing that, create the pull request. So when we're creating the merge request, you can see that the, now we have a pipeline. And if we click on a pipeline, it actually consists of two states for now. And it's actually quite dynamic. So it can be two or three stages depending on what you added. And you can see in the first stage, it does some composer test. In the second stage, it validates there is composer lint, spelling check, PHP code standards for your Drupal code standards as stand. So while I'm finishing it, I'll let it run and we'll see the result there. But I already contributed and created the merge request. So uh, let's finalize it and then have a look at our results. So to conclude, please use merge requests if you are contributing to Drupal. If you're doing any contribution, patches are still fine, but there's obviously way more insights and uh, especially help reviewers to review your module to create merge requests. I'm just saying it twice. Uh, learn Git if you didn't or teach Git, which I think is another good point as well. Uh, we all think we know Git until we learn a new command. Um, that's, that's the case, been the case for me as well. So uh, keep on using Git, keep on learning Git, and uh, have a look at the GitLab features that are available for you as a Drupal developer. There's plenty there to learn. And again, the system is massive. So uh, if you are going to Jana's session at 3 o'clock accessibility, in Wizzy, we get it there. She would talk more about insights, about pull requests, um, and the changes she did for accessibility and CK editor specifically. So if you're interested more, check out her sessions. Uh, it's mostly about accessibility, but there are some insights about the issues there as well. Oh, I see it when it's uh, recorded. So let's have a look at our pipeline. So Composer went through, Composer lint. I assume if it's going to fail, usually it's PHP CS. So you can click on the runner and see while it's going. So it's still running. So I would like to really uh, say big thank you to volunteers, organizers, sponsors. And thank you for coming. And do we have any questions?
Yep, so if you go to the ECA, uh, here's the ECA GitLab CI file. As I said, it changed recently, now it's a bit more clear. So you can see here, um, you can see here that they actually uh, showing what to allow failure and what to, there, there is an ability to switch off specific That, 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 well, false means that if, if it will fail, it will stop. So mo mo most of the stuff, I think by default, most of the allow failure is true. So it means you'll get a brown exclamation mark and CI yeah, would continue running. Where is it? That's right. Yep. Yep. And I'm still learning it because what I saw is if your module has Nightwatch test, the CI, whoa, CI would automatically detect it and would add a Nightwatch uh, container there. So there is more to the CI that, um, that, that's there to the eye. And uh, I would recommend to create the template and read stuff in the template and also go to the documentation, uh, if it's still open here, go to the documentation, they do go uh, inside the pipeline and where to run it and uh, some stuff there. It's not complete, as I said, needs to uh, have more documentation, but check the documentation and check the uh, template file. Any more questions? Yep. Yep, so if we go back to the issue, thank you for that. Go back to the issue. There you go. So here, yep, so you can add div or, so there is a plain div, which basically says merge request dot for div that changes that. And uh, you can do it in git, 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 this is Drupal specific, but you can do it in uh, GitHub and GitLab by yeah, using specific URL as well and we saw that we saw that our CI failed so let's have a look at the results obviously it's PHP code standard and we just go and say oh the code standard is not up to date and we can see why it's not up to date Also, I found uh, if you are referencing directly, uh, do a preferred source because Composer does caches it. And if you don't use preferred source, it would actually, the Composer would download this div from some time and would use it until the Composer cache is clean and then it would download the newer version. So there is, uh, yeah, both ways, but that's a good reference. So, so yeah, that's uh, usually uh, the case uh, for version updates. So things where the composer changes, it's a good question. Uh, so you actually in your, because I said, when you do a merge request, it creates a different repo. So you can actually reference this repo and reference this particular branch. So what you would do, let me see if I have, I don't think I have. Uh, so we have a section uh, called uh, repositories in our composer. 
So very similar to how we reference, for example, the library, right? You would reference, uh, you would say v, uh, VCS, I think. Uh, and you would reference, so if we go to our branch here, so there you would add there you would add the, uh, this uh, code repository and then you would reference the branch name prefixing it with dev dash then you can pull code directly from this repository and uh, from this particular branch yep 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 so unless you are the contributor uh, don't do that, but I did that a lot when uh, migrating clients to Drupal 10 and we couldn't get the Drupal 10 module up to scratch. That would be the only way. There, there is a Composer plugin that kind of allows patches to turn into a newer version, but I found it didn't work all the time. Yeah. So. Yep, yep, the saving the file with your repository and documenting it. And the commander, that's the way. Uh, one more? No? We good? Well, have a good rest of your conference. Thank you.